Welcome back to our video module on statics. Now thus far we've been playing a lot with centroids, checking out what they can do with the papascal denus theorem and also using them in distributed loads. And I'd like to spend some time today looking at, um, in certain circles, a fairly common situation. We're going to go underwater for this one. So let's imagine that we have, you know, a lake and under that lake we have, I don't know, some sort of pedestal or maybe it's like part of a concrete gate that moves, whatever the case is. And, um, you know, it's, it's right here. And, and, and my goal is I need to know what's happening at the surface of this pedestal. Let's think about this. What do we know? We know that, we know that the pressure is going to be normal to the uh, surface. And we know that uh, pressure is a uh, specific weight times d. We're going to say d is the depth. So I know that a small depth, small pressure here, and then down here we're going to have a fairly big depth, so a big pressure. And I know that um, I'm going to I'm going to do and I'm going to something funky is going to happen here. There we go. All right. Um, and I know that as I go deeper, my pressure is going to increase. And I know that as I go vertically deeper, my pressure will in increase linearly. Well, I know that this this angled piece is also going, you know, it's linear, so or it's straight. So the pressure acting on this is going to increase linearly. Now, I, I need to point out something, and that is we are making the assumption that this block, this this slab, we'll call it, has a constant width. So it's rectangular. The width is W and we'll make the length L. And we already know what the depth is. We've we've covered that with uh, with D. And uh, here we have the pressure on this. Now I also know something else that the pressure is going to keep decreasing, keep decreasing, keep decreasing until it hits zero at the surface. Well, check that out. We have a nice little triangle going on here. And this looks suspiciously like something else we've covered. These arrows increasing. This looks very much like distributed load. Now let's try and figure out what do these arrows really mean? We've said they're pressure, but let's take out the width, the part of us, the part that's coming towards you and towards me. If that's the case, what we're really looking at here is the force exerted per unit length. That's what we're looking at. So uh, if we wanted to put this in the equation form, we know that the pressure equals force per unit area, or force divided by length times width. So in this case, force per unit length is the pressure times the width. And you can kind of imagine that, like here's some sort of differential, you know, like some sliver of pressure, multiply it by the width, you know, coming towards you, coming towards me, and we get the force per unit differential length. So this is a force per unit differential length. So let's let let's write that. So that means this right here is our force divided by length, and that will give us um, an intuitive idea of what those arrows are really meaning. Now we can we can use all the same rules we've used before to solve these types of equations, we simply uh, take this force per unit length, we can separate it into this uh, top triangle area. We find our centroid one third of the way, right? And then we have our other area right here, which would be like, you know, in the middle, and we can combine the two. The same way we use composite plates earlier. The one thing I will point out is that all of this load, all of this force is going to act at one location. 
you can guess what it is. It's the centroid of this composite area. We call that the center of pressure. In hydrostatics, we deal, whoops, sorry. In hydrostatics, we deal with the center of pressure. This is where, if we, if we wanted to pretend like all that pressure was being applied at one point, all the pressure is being applied at one point at the center of pressure. And then we find the total area, multiply it by, um, multiply, or sorry, find the total area under this kind of distributed load. That's going to be our total force. That is the total force acting at the center of pressure. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at what happens if we don't have a perfect rectangular shape. Hope you've enjoyed looking at hydrostatics, forces on submerged surfaces. I look forward to seeing you on our next module.